Yo, right, everybody, we are here today checking out a little upcoming roguelike banger by the name of Tamaric Trail. Now, this one is one that personally stood out to me for its gorgeous art style and animations, as you shall soon note. But speaking of features that make Tamaric Trail stand out as a whole, is the utilization of fully customizable dice through your journey in this eldritch enchanted nightmare. A big plus for D&D fans, I'm sure. One of the biggest complaints I hear covering roguelikes and lights is, uh, I like everything about this, but it's a deck builder. Or, it's a deck battler. So Tamaric Trail cleverly substitutes cards for dice, and these dice evolve with you from battle to battle, letting you customize them in such a way that you almost feel like you're carrying loaded dice in your favor. In turn, Combat becomes a lot more reactive and less focus on drawing the right card at the right moment. That said, if you enjoy what you see here today, check out the provided link down below the description to download and wishlist Tamaric Trail on Steam. Let's go. Alright everybody, that's said and done. How about we dive into our venture here in Tamaric Trail. Do not be fooled by the beauty of this cabin, the colorful colors. It's really what's out in the trails that's uh, the problem now due to apparently some sort of fallen artifact from space. Cthulhu type stuff, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so here we are. This is going to be the trail. Let me tell you, this is a very, very long trail. We're starting off over here. Where's our trail going to, you're saying? Well, we go through here, we go through there to some sort of weird town right there as well. It keeps going some sort of manner. Got some ducks flying about. Um, let's see, right now we have option of fight or a fight. This will lead us to some sort of event and a treasure chest and another event. And then we have a big fight over through here. I want to go through here so we get a couple of these fights in here for sure. Let's see what we draw here first. And another thing I want you guys to note as well is the animations that I've mentioned. A lot of these games usually have like stationary, you know, characters and things you just don't really do too much, don't look too appealing. This is a very appealing game. Like we have these characters that kind of really pop out from the background as well. This individual here has 12 resolve. What this works as is essentially their shield. I got to get through 12 quote unquote shield to do damage to the heart. So right now, let's start off with an auto roll. That basically makes it so it throws it together for you. You could also roll yourself one at a time in case you're trying to avoid this. What happened right now is indeed uh, a die knock, we'll call it. If your dies do knock, it'll trigger this. This actually has a benefit because some certain effects on the side of the die that you roll will have benefits where if you do get a die knock, it'll amplify the damage, but it'll sometimes also have effects where it could be against you. So it depends on how you customize your die. So at the moment, we do have six shield, which does indeed mean I don't got to worry about resolve to block the five damage coming away. And then we'll do six damage to my friend right here. All right, Radicate, what do you got for me? You got a shot. We blocked it. Everything is good. Resolve is still on top. He is looking to buff up or debuff. Don't really know. Still in the auto roll right here. Now this is where I've mentioned knocking die together is useful. As you can see, per knock, it'll apply bleed. But since we didn't knock any die, guess what? This does absolutely nothing for us. So you know what? Let's just re-roll everything again. Try it again. <laughs> That's even worse because he's not even attacking. Got he! <laughs> So here, we'll put this little bleed on him. 10 damage is coming away, that's fine. Bleed, as you can see, took the rest of his resolve and did one damage. And it's gonna be over for him next turn here, as long as we draw an attack card, and there it is. Die, attack, die, whatever. You know what I meant. This right here is one of my favorite cards. I don't necessarily like the art of this poor bird getting, uh, you know, speared, or not speared, but arrowed. It's my kind right there. But man, does this make some very powerful combos. It is. It does require bouncing, or at least knocking die together. Here is where the fun begins. Let's go to customization of our dice here. And there is what we're looking for, right? Which means we want to make sure that we have this card in the opposite die of the die that we already have. That does indeed have the bleed effect, I believe, right? So, now the back flip that we have, as I've mentioned, flips, right? Whenever you use it. It gets exhausted. It will flip over to use that card. So now what we can do is we could either roll this dice. And if we're lucky enough, we roll the bird with the arrow through his body. 
or we roll the backflip, which in turn, after you use the backflip, it flips over to the bird. So now we have double the chance to get this bird to show up from one die roll. And then if we were to necessarily say have a card that from this point flipped to here, and then that had another effect that flipped to here, you can essentially go through the entire die in one single turn if you combo it up properly. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. He's looking to do some sort of effect. We knocked die. Unfortunately, we did not get the backflip to trigger the bird or just roll the bird in general. We were so close. Um, but we did get bleed, so I'll go ahead and set that up, and there's really no reason to drop any defenses, so let's just do this. What has this individual done? He's done swift. Double the damage from your next attack, consume one swift stack, so I'm not sure that's already doubled or if it's going to hit me for 12. Uh-oh! And now my bird, man. Pow! There goes hard. Extra bleed, so we will... Oh, 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 we know that this dude would- oh, he was so close to dying this turn. So close to dying from the bleed, but unfortunately he resolved- the resolve gave him enough recovery that he actually covered the bleed just a little bit. But now all we need is basically an attack. And luckily for us, we got the bird again with the knock, so it worked. Deal seven damage, flip to die randomly if hit enemy attacked has any debuffs. I mean, we do have bleed effects, quite a few of them now. I'm not crazy about random flip on the die after, but um, I'll take it. I'll take it. What I'll do is I'll use that on the die that has uh, no combos just yet. So I believe you are the individual with no combos. Yeah. So what do we remove? I'll remove one of these uh, basic attack cards. Insect man, huh? Insect man, what do you do? You got to pass. Gain one pest stack. If wounded per round, heal one wound and lose pest stacks on three pest stacks. Okay. It's a lot of, a lot of pest talk there. Wild heart. I've seen that before. Six damage coming right. What do we got here? We have a bounce, but really nothing really benefits us too much. So, um, I could reroll your saying. Sure. But whatever. Let's just play it a little bit uh, defensively. Not every single die roll is going to be a, a fun little combination, you know. I hope it does. It is going to be for the boss fight coming up, but uh, at the moment it isn't. Oh, but check this. We actually got this. Oh, the problem is, remember what happened? He's got to have a debuff. He doesn't have a debuff. So it'll still do damage, I believe, but it won't obviously um, flip afterwards randomly. But that's fine. I'll still take the damage, and right now this will do some direct damage, and then we're almost there. Wild Heart or whatever it triggered. Dodge is available, so now he's going to avoid damage from one attack, so... If we get like two, just two regular claws, is all we're looking for here. Uh, we only got hmm, one claw. Let me reroll again. Let me try it out again. Maybe we lucked out. So he'll dodge that, but then that'll finish it off. Get him out. And I, I think you're noticing right how quick these fights can indeed be, and that's what makes it so much fun. You're not over here just thinking, "Oh man, can I please draw that card to set my combo up?" I like the idea of dramatic display. Go in the middle, and then we put this here. So we now know for a fact that if we roll this side here, dramatic display, after we use it, it'll flip over here to exploit weakness. And obviously, this car, or at least this uh, die face, has already put a weakness on for a fact, so we know that this will definitely go and do the damage it's supposed to, and also flip again, and maybe get us some more damage. Here we'll get our first core more than likely. And I'll discuss those here once we get one. It also has to be set up through the die area. Another eradicate man over here. Let's go and uh, auto roll it up. Uh oh, guess what we got? He's not necessarily attacking, but that's fine. We just want to dodge to set up Birdman and direct damage. We won't do any more damage because he was res he resolved more than bleed would have taken, but we're close. So now he also has Swift, which is double the attack for your next attack. Oh, look what we got. We got blind here, huh? So we could... Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. That's going to flip over to that. And... Oh, he will not die next turn from bleed. Oh, but wait a minute. 
I forgot that now this this die that we just used does the random side, and the random side flew to uh, or at least landed on an attack. So <laughs> you saw what happened. We basically took this guy out in one single roll. And that's where I mentioned once you customize these die to your favor, oh man, it becomes really, really fun. Um, harass, uh, ex apply two exposed to the enemy and flip the card to the right. Okay, that could be good. And before we even customize in it, let's come over here and get our core. And this is where we'll talk about the cores here. So, these items actually go into your die. Right now we have two die, by the way. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens soon, but uh, let's just say that you, you don't only stay with two die the entire time. Demon Blood increases resolve regeneration by one. All die bounces are counted twice. And right now we have a lot of bouncing um, favors, right? So that could be good. Shattered Bone increases damage of attacks by one. That is a very simple attack. I like the idea of this one because right now, you know, we're very, very bounce happy, you know? So I think if we were to put this dude here, right? He would do exposed. Then he would come over to dramatic display. So we have exposed, we have blind, and then we come over here, exploit weakness, and that does a random die afterwards. Now what about this bounce you're saying? Well, for bounces here, we know we need it for jagged bolt for effect, right? We'll put this core over here. And here we go. And here is gonna be our first mini boss. It looks very intimidating. Now, I've had good enough builds by this point where I could take this guy out in almost like two rolls max. I don't think we have the proper um, die for this here, but we'll see what we can make happen. Right now he's setting up a debuff or a buff of some kind. We did start off with the bird, which does require a knock, which we did get. So let's go ahead and pop that in there for some bleed and nice little damage overall. We'll take some sixers right there. It won't be enough to cut into his HP just yet, but there it is. And of course, as a mini boss. Oh yeah, he summons ads, does he? Of course. Ooh, this is a, a bad situation for us. Very, very bad as a matter of fact. There's nothing... I mean, he's still debuff, so that could still hurt from the debuff, I suppose. But if I use these die, that's going to be 4, that's going to be 2, it's going to be 6. So reduce 6 from 22, we're looking at... what is it, uh, 16? So he's obviously going to do critical damage to us, to our heart. Are you sure about that? I'll use you, however. And, oh man, bleed. Could have been. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. No, it's still two. It'll bring me down to 18. What I could do. What I could, could do. Oh my God, this combo's still happening. Why, do you, why are you tempting me so much? You want me to take direct damage, don't you? It lowered the damage it's gonna do to me. Oh no, I got infinite combo. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're a rascal. Was I letting on? Yes, I was letting on a little bit. The moment we started getting those flips, I kind of saw that happening. And that's where I mentioned you saw what basically happened. They were there one, the second roll took care of them. Now, this wasn't based on me having the right die that we basically used this, flip to this side, then that flip to the other side, flip to this side. This happened based on the fact that we triggered an infinite combo, which has a chance of happening whenever you start, you know, getting things going over and over. And that took care of him altogether. Oh, look at that, new die. So yeah, when our first um, big um, roadblock on our literal road to hell, this gives us a new die. It starts off empty. You got to customize it yourself. But that's where all the things that we've been acquiring so far and removing. That's where we go ahead and put them into this one. So this right now doesn't seem like too much of a, a fun die. It's not a bad die to have, though, just for the fact that, you know, sometimes I'm looking for a block, which we didn't have for that particular situation just now, but then it worked out just fine. And there it is. We have a little extra blocking right here. And so far, I don't want to touch these die because I feel like they're doing amazing work for us right now. So we need at least two more battles to fill this dude up. And I know we could go ahead and start picking the bones at these and like, you know, moving somewhere, something somewhere else. But uh, I'm liking what's happening right here. So let's just leave it like that. 
All right, guys, with that event out of the way, this is the perfect spot for us to wrap up. I hope you have enjoyed. This has been Tara McTrail. All the information for this will be down below in the description. Guess you want to pick it up for yourselves. Check out the demo for yourselves. See if, how far you could get. See if you could indeed knock out the boss in two turns like your boy did. Because I challenge you. Could you actually do it? No, my friends, you can't do it. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. All the information down below, as I've mentioned. Check out the demo for yourselves. And if you enjoyed it, wishlist the game for later this year. I'll catch you guys next time.